So this is a quick video on why cholesterol is healthy. We've been told that cholesterol and saturated fats cause heart disease. Now that seems to be pretty odd, since all indigenous groups, so our ancestors, were consuming meat as the base of their diet and they were just as healthy as any living being in nature, so just as healthy as you can be in nature. Now, this study from 2018 states that there's no evidence of research to show that dietary cholesterol leads to cardiovascular diseases and actually as a result the US removed the recommendations of restricting cholesterol. Also pretty odd since we have done so much research on this topic and everyone seems to take the lipid hypothesis which is the hypothesis that cholesterol and saturated fats lead to heart disease as truth even though it is a hypothesis. In my research I have found several papers stating that cholesterol is not associated with coronary heart disease. First of all about the cholesterol. The body makes a certain amount of it every day. It is essential for the body to function needed for the biosynthesis of steroid hormones so the creation of sex hormones and corticosteroids just to name a few testosterone progesterone estradiol aldosterone and so on what a coincidence that we all have low sex hormones nowadays when we lower our cholesterol intake cholesterol is also needed to make vitamin d which is by far one of the most important nutrients just look at all the articles and studies on vitamin d and its importance in preventing almost any disease honestly i could just end the video here because the presence of normal sex hormone levels and vitamin d would be enough to understand that cholesterol is vital for the human body to function since vitamin d also prevents diseases like heart diseases etc However, there's a lot more to talk about. Cholesterol is also important for the production of bile acid, which is important for a healthy digestive system to absorb all nutrients from the food, prevent gallstones, which is just concentrated cholesterol in the gallbladder due to a lack of bile flow, to detox the liver, I'm gonna make separate videos on that, and to prevent constipation. So moreover, it's important for the cellular structure of the brain, central nervous system and important component of the myelin sheath around the nerve which is kind of like the nerve isolation just like with your cables that have plastic around the metal our nerves have the myelin sheath around the nerve itself and so the myelin sheath prevents neuropathy that is permanent nerve damage all of our nutrients play such a large role to a healthy body in fact, a deficiency in just one mineral or, or just overall nutrient can lead to any kind of disease. In our modern times, most people are deficient in almost all nutrients. And the only thing everyone is getting in excess of really is caloric energy, so calories and my best friend calcium. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that if you eat more cholesterol, then at some point your body just makes less. You can, however, be deficient in cholesterol. Almost everyone has low sex hormones nowadays, especially the people with a low animal product intake. So you need a certain amount of cholesterol every day and the body does not make enough of it. And if we exceed a certain amount, then our body just makes less. So technically you cannot overdose cholesterol at least not naturally. If your body doesn't have to synthesize so create something then it means we are taking stress off the organs that would normally have to create it and this is always a good thing. High cholesterol diets result in the body needing to make less cholesterol. Now in many studies that I have read there seem to be people that usually suffering from diabetes or some chronic disease or just overall the disease that seem to be sensitive to cholesterol intake and there seems to be genetics involved sometimes. So this whole sensitive thing can be explained easily. 
every cell in our body requires cholesterol. It is traveling through our body to repair tissue, so it is anti-inflammatory. Now, anti-inflammatory is good. It's what we need, especially in our modern times, because we have so much inflammation. Now, when someone with a chronic disease increases their cholesterol by the diet, it often increases in their blood. That is because they have had low amounts of cholesterol before because the body couldn't synthesize so create the amount of cholesterol needed because their organs were overly stressed. The bodies of someone with a chronic disease are already struggling of life. There are certain metabolic pathways that are not working properly anymore. So now that they finally have sufficient amounts of cholesterol, the LDL protein in the blood is raised due to the increased need of cholesterol in their cell because they have inflammation in the cell and the cholesterol is fighting the inflammation. Another thing to understand is that we really don't have any cholesterol in the blood. LDL and HDL that are water soluble are proteins that carry the cholesterol which is a lipid. Imagine them as airplanes and cholesterol as passenger. LDL are the airplanes which start from the liver and have the cells as their destination and HDL are the airplanes that start from the cell and have the liver as their destination. So high LDL means that there's inflammation in the cell which the cholesterol is kind of trying to fight by being the anti-inflammatory and that is the real connection to heart disease. Heart attacks are caused by inflammation and that is why we see high LDL in people with arterial plaquing and heart disease because high LDL is a marker of inflammation. But lowering the LDL with statin drugs is just going to result in more inflammation because we have less anti-inflammatory properties of the cholesterol and this is ultimately going to result in disease or even death because we really need the cholesterol to fight the inflammation. In this study from 2018 called LDLC does not cause cardiovascular disease, you can read that there's an increasing understanding that the mechanisms of heart disease are more complicated than just high LDL and statin treatment in particular when used at primary prevention is of doubtful benefit. Now the dangerous LDL which plaques up your arteries is called small dense LDL which is in fact so small that it can penetrate the arterial wall. You in fact can have normal or even low amounts of LDL in your blood test but have this type of dangerous LDL because it does not contribute to high amounts of LDL in the blood test due to its small size. So that is just another reason why high LDL is irrelevant in most cases unless you use it as a marker of inflammation. If you want to know whether you have high amounts of the actual dangerous LDL called small dense LDL then you need to do an advanced lipid profile test and let's actually say that you have elevated amounts of it. What do you do? Get on a healthy diet and lifestyle. I have videos on how to do that on my channel. So in general, just stop worrying about cholesterol and address the inflammation. If you seem to have some kind of genetic problem with cholesterol, so-called hyperresponder, it shouldn't be on concern unless you have problems with your arteries or inflammation. So just like with anyone else. You just have naturally higher LDL in your blood. Again, stop worrying about cholesterol. It might be a mark of inflammation, but it could also be genetics. Here we have another high quality study from 2009 stating that the relationship between cholesterol and heart disease was likely largely over exaggerated and the development of coronary heart disease is more complex and involves many factors. So the most important aspect of preventing heart disease being stopping alcohol consumption and smoking. This is by far the most important aspect. 
also sleeping at least nine hours every day or every night and decreasing calcium and another health secret that I explain in my calcium video. This is of great importance because arterial plaquing usually begins with your arteries failing and calcium plays a role in that. Also removing vegetable seed oils and having high quality animal products in your diet. Here's another study that stated that they found little to no evidence of reducing saturated fat and reducing the risk of cardiovascular diseases. If you do all of these things that I just told you, then you never have to worry about getting a heart attack. There are studies out there that show a connection between high meat consumption and degenerative diseases, inflammation, etc. And we could honestly argue about whether they are actually showing a correlation or a causation because most of these meats are fried in vegetable seed oils, but they are probably correct about some things because what they are showing is the link between conventional meat and inflammation and ultimately disease. Now there is a big, big difference between conventional meat and grass fed and grass finished meat. There's definitely even worse things than conventional meat, especially high omega-6 fats, in particular linoleic acid, which is part of the omega-6 fat family, found in high amounts in vegetable seed oils that have shown in many studies to be the actual cause of heart disease because of all the inflammation that they are causing. Just look at this study that was published in 2016, but the experiment was done in 1968 to 1973, which seems to be very odd. It was in fact the largest and most strictly executed study of replacing saturated fats, with, which usually come with cholesterol, with vegetable seed oil, rich in linoleic acid at that time, but for some questionable reason, they could not publish this study at that time. What they found out is that vegetable seed oils increase the risk of heart disease despite lowering cholesterol, which is, as I already explained, not the cause for heart disease. Now, in general, what you have to understand is that there is a fuck ton of money involved with these studies. Just to make these studies, it costs so much money and usually companies just want to spend the money in science if they can kind of show that their product is good. So they have made so much money off of vegetable seed oils and diseases because people lowered their cholesterol. It's a wonder that they could finally publish it and it seems like there are still people out there that care about the health of the general public population like you and me. And there's even the seven country study that was the study where it all began that people thought if you eat too much meat then you're going to have a heart attack. Now a very interesting thing is that the seven country study wasn't originally done on seven countries but actually 22. Now the other 15 countries were excluded because they did not fit the lipid hypothesis of saturated fats and cholesterol causing heart disease. So if you don't see that this whole meat is killing you and cholesterol is plaquing up your arteries thing was just done to make people sick and make a lot of money, then I don't know. So, but getting back to the meat, conventional meat is being fed unnatural diets, usually grains and soy instead of grass and leafy greens. And that alters their fat storages. So their omega-3 to omega-6 ratio and with the increase of omega-6 fats. Omega-6 fats, especially when oxidized, and that happens when you heat it or just let it become rancid. So all of your fried food has oxidized omega-6 fats in it, and that leads to heart disease because of all the inflammation that they are causing. Now, if you still think that the body might make enough cholesterol, if it's healthy, then I can tell you that this is not the case. The presence of high quality meat in every diet is of great importance and has always been the base of human nutrition. I do however not say that we shouldn't eat plants at all. Anyways, for more information about a sustainable healthy diet that is achievable for anyone, check out my other videos. 
or write me an email right now. I do consultations at 30 euros per hour. The price will go up in the future once I have more clients. And other than that, have a good day or a good night.